Hi everyone, I'm Charlene Habermeyer of Good Parenting Brighter Children, and this is Tidbits of Wisdom for Parents. Today I want to talk about a very important subject. It's about you being a parent and not a friend to your child. In fact, it's such an important subject that I wrote a blog on it, made a video on it, and you can go to my website and you can read all the details about it because I'm just going to give you the highlights. But several years ago when my oldest son was in preschool, I met a woman who made the comment to me more than once that the most important thing to her was that her son and her daughter, that she was friends with them because she said her number one goal was that she wanted her children to like her. I think that's something that we all want. We all want our children to like us, but we can't re resort to being their friend. We need to stay and we need to be their parent. There's a lot of research that has been done on this subject, and p kids need their parents to be parents. And here's some of the reasons why. First of all, they need someone that they can look up to. They need someone who will be an example. So in other words, this is really important. In fact, in terms of being an example, your kids may listen to what you say, but they'll follow what you do and what kind of an example you are to them. So that example part is extremely important. They need somebody who's going to implement boundaries. Kids need boundaries. They need rules. There needs to be structure and organization in a house. They need discipline and they need it to be fair discipline. Okay, the, the punishment needs to fit the crime. In other words, you're not going to hang them up by their toenails, and, but at the same time, you're also not going to ignore bad behavior where there needs to be consequences. And they need to understand that there's boundaries, they need to understand that there's rules, and they need to understand that there are consequences. They need somebody, somebody that they can confide in and somebody who will not turn their confidences and share them with other people. They need someone who's going to give them sound advice. Now, this doesn't mean that parents have to be everything to their children, but they do need to rely on you and they need, to, and they need this help. It doesn't just mean that they need your help when they're young. They need your help when they are teenagers and even when they are adults. They need someone who will actively listen to them. And we're going to talk about this more in other episodes, but it's important that we actively listen, that we give them good eye contact, that we get rid of our cell phones so that we can actually show and prove to our children that we are interested in what they're saying. Obviously, we need to spend time with them. We talked th about that already, but time is a very important thing. Kids pretty much need little else. They need the number one thing that they need from us is they need us to be a parent and they need us to, um, to give them time. They need to help in problem solving skills, and I'll be talking about that more as well. But the other thing is they need their parents to be tough when the situation warrants it. And that's oftentimes where parents kind of shrink back. They don't want to necessarily be tough. They do in the back of their minds, they want their kids to like them, but you know what? In the long run, they will respect you more, they will like you more if you are tough when the situation warrants it. So parenting is not an easy job. In fact, I think it's the hardest job out there. It's not a nine to five job. In fact, if you're going to a nine to five job and trying to balance parenthood, my hat goes off to you. That is a very difficult thing to do. But I'm sure that if you compare your nine to five job to your parenting job, that parenting is blood, sweat and tears. It's a lot, a lot more challenging and a lot more work than a nine to five job. In fact, it will be probably the hardest thing that you and I ever do. There's an interesting story. This was many, many years ago when I read it. Um, I was born and raised in the, uh, during the Ann Landers Dear Abby era. And there was one of the um, columns that I remember reading, and it was about these um, juvenile delinquents, as they called them back then, um, and they were all in juvenile uh, delinquent hall. And this is in Canada, and there was a reverend that came in, and he was talking to these boys, and he said he wanted them to write down what happened? Why did they, did they make, you know, what happened in their lives and in their home life to have them come to the situation where they were at now? And what he wanted them to also write, what do you think could have been different? What do you think could have helped you so that you didn't um, end up in juvenile hall? And so what these young boys did is they wrote a letter to their parents. And these are some of the things that they said, not all of them. They said, number one, keep cool. Don't lose your temper. We are great imitators. Now remember, these are boys talking to their parents. 
Don't get strung out on booze or pills or drugs. When we see this, we get the idea that it's okay to go for a bottle or a capsule when things get heavy. Bug us. Be strict and consistent in dis dishing out discipline. Show us who's boss. It gives us a sense of security. Now you can do this without being the dictatorial parent. You can make certain that there's rules and regulations and things that your kids know. Okay, we need to look up to our parents. Don't dress, dance, or talk like, at, like us. You look ridiculous. Light a candle. Show us the way. Tell us God is not dead or sleeping or on vacation. We need to believe in something bigger than ourselves. Scare the hell out of us. If you catch us lying or cheating or stealing, get tough. When we need punishment, dish it out. Don't be wishy-washy. There's a lot of wishy-washy parents out there. Again, those parents in the back of their mind, they want their kids to like them. Mean what you say. Be honest with us. Tell us the truth no matter what. And that is really important because sooner or later, if you're not telling your kids the truth, they're going to find out. And then what that causes is <clears throat> they will not trust you or want to confide in you because they don't know whether or not you're actually telling them the truth. It's a lot harder to tell the truth. It's tough. Sometimes the things that you say that are the truth, they, they're, they're not, they're, they can be hurtful sometimes. So you have to couch them and try to be as diplomatic as possible. But be a parent to your children. Do not be a friend. And again, go to my blog for more details about this. You can watch the video about this as well. I refer to you, I refer a number of links and articles, additional articles, because this apparently is a lot bigger problem than what we would imagine. Let me leave you with a thought. It's by Lamine Pearlhart. The role of the parent is not to become the child, but to provide guidance to it, to walk through the same abyss the parents walked through, but with the help of a light called parental guidance. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you tomorrow.